You'll never guess who her lobbyist was. Any guesses? Any guesses who her lobbyist was? Her in-house paid lobbyist for 10 years before he was elected? The current radical minister of the environment. The chair recognizes wow. the honorable member for South Shore, St. Margaret's. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to deal with the ruling of the Speaker with regard to the production of documents uh, ordered by this House on the scandal involving Sustainable Development Technologies Canada, otherwise known as the Liberal Billion Dollar Green Slush Fund. The process for those watching was that the House ordered the production of these documents around the scandal to the law clerk, which could then be transferred to the RCMP for investigation. As we know, the power of, uh, of the House is greater than any one act, yet the Prime Minister's personal department, the PCO, decided to execute this order by telling departments to re send in documents but redact them. As a result, that was, in our view, and obviously in the Speaker's view, a breach of members' privileges because the order from the House did not say redact. As a result, we're here to discuss this today, and it's been referred to the uh, PROC Committee for further consideration. So in doing this, it's pretty important to understand there's some objections from the government, as there has been, about some alleged uh, breach of the Charter. Well, there is no breach of the Charter, and here's why. If uh, a criminal activity is suspected in a company you own, say a bank, you're part of a bank management team, and you discover that somebody who works for you has stolen the money of depositors. That company has the right, indeed it has the obligation, to call in the police and to turn those documents over to the police. It does not require the police to go to court to get access to those documents. That owner of that company, that management team, can supply those documents to the police to start the investigation. Why does that matter with regard to this instance? We have a foundation that was set up in 2001 called Sustainable Development Technology Canada with the purpose of providing uh, taxpayer financial assistance to green technology companies before they're commercialized. Since this government has been elected, they've received a billion dollars of taxpayer money. And the result of that, and probing by parliamentary committees is that we found that in 82%, 82% of the funding transactions approved by the Board of Directors during a sample period, a five-year period that the Auditor General looked at, 82% of those transactions were conflicted. So that's a number. What does that mean? According to the Auditor General, that's $330 million of taxpayer money that was given to companies where the board members who voted to give it to that company, those companies, had a conflict of interest. In addition, the Auditor General found that that same board approved another $59 million of projects that they weren't authorized to do. They were outside of the mandate of the foundation that the government and parliament set up. They broke the SDTC contribution agreements, and these directors broke the conflict of interest laws of Canada as public office holders, and they broke the SDTC Act. So how did they break them? What does that act say? Those two acts say. You know what they say? They say that a governor and council appointment, a person appointed by the government entrusted to oversee taxpayer money, is not to personally profit from their work on that committee as a GIC appointment, and neither is their family. Yet that's exactly what happened. It's exactly what happened. And the Auditor General found in a five-year period where there were 405 transactions approved by the board, the Auditor General sampled 226, so only half of them, and found that 186 of those 226 transactions were conflicted. That's the 82 percent. That's the 300 and Unreal. 30 million. If the Auditor General looked at all 400 transactions, statistically that would probably mean the rest are just as conflicted. And that 400 transactions is 800 
and $32 million of taxpayer money. So these liberal hand-picked appointees of the Prime Minister from the chair on got themselves into a position to benefit their own companies. So how did they do that and what were their conflicts? Every transaction, every bit of money approved by the billion dollar green slush fund, every single dollar had to be approved by the board of directors. And the way the system worked was that beforehand they would send out a note of what transactions were on the board and directors would declare a conflict. So at the beginning of every board meeting they'd say, here's the list of transactions we're considering, here's the list of which directors are conflicted with which companies, so now let's go to work. And in some cases the director would stay in the room, according to the minutes, while they were voting on their own project. In other cases, the director would get up and leave the room while they voted on it, and then that director would come back into the room, and the next director would get out of the room for their project. A nice little tidy conspiracy of conflict of interest to enrich themselves and the values of their companies. One director in particular was particularly uh, aggressive at this. Appointed in 2016 by, by the Prime Minister, her name's Andre Lise Matot. She runs a venture capital firm called Cycle Capital and Green Technology. And Andre Lise Matot, her companies before and during her time on the board received $250 million. That one director, her companies received $250 million in grants from SDTC. Now, some of that was before, and I'll talk about that before in a minute, but while she was on the board, $114 million, $114 million went to companies, green companies that she had invested in. And during her time on the board, the value of her company, Cycle Capital, tripled. Because getting an STTC grant is a stamp of Government of Canada approval, which allowed those companies to raise other funds. You'll never guess who her lobbyist was. Any guesses? Any guesses who her lobbyist was? Her in-house paid lobbyist for 10 years before he was elected? The current radical minister of the environment. Oh, wow. Oh. While he was lobbying for oh, Cycle Capital, the current radical minister of the environment got $111 million. Oh. And not only that, that minister, that minister lobbied, according to the Re Lobbyist Registration Act, lobbied the Prime Minister's office and the industry department 25 times, 25 times in the year before he was elected. And guess what? For all his hard work, he owns shares in Cycle Capital. And he still owns those shares. He's not answered how much the value of those shares have gone up since they've been granted and since that company got this kind of support. But if that wasn't bad enough, this particular director in 2022 left and went to the Canada Infrastructure Bank Board. And what's the first thing that she did at the Canada Infrastructure Bank Board? Voted $170 million of infrastructure bank money for a company owned by the chair of the Green Slush Fund, Annette Fisherin. Now, Annette Fisherin also sought $6 million for the Fisherin Centre at Cape Breton Centre, at the Fisherin Centre at Cape Breton University, because it was failing. SDTC said no when it went through the process. This is a conflict. But in emails, they said, we will help you find money from other government departments. And pretty soon after that, she got her company got 50, uh, the Sharon Center got about 10 million, 12 million dollars from ACOA and ISET, and her other companies got 50 million dollars from Natural Resources Canada, and then of course there's the Infrastructure Bank one. This is the story that we see. Nine directors, according to the Auditor General, made up those 186 conflicts. Now, that's why the CFO of the Industry Department, when the whistleblower called on him, said and sat down with them said this is way bigger 
than the Kretchen government sponsorship scandal, which was $42 million of right. taxpayer money going to advertising agencies right. and friends of the Liberal Party. Way bigger. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. So why we're asking for the documents is every time we have a witness at committee, every time we ask a question, new information comes out. The government has opposed us at every step of the way right. of getting those documents, and we know why. Just the scratch of the surface by the Auditor General, which is a small part, is $390 million to Liberal insiders. That's what they're trying to hide. That's why they're opposing this production order for got to be turned over to the RCMP. That's why the Prime Minister's personal department, the PCO, defied the order of this House to produce these documents and ordered departments to redact all the sensitive information out. And surprisingly, they used a lot of black ink when they put those things in. Uh, they really went through a lot of toner on photocopiers when they printed this thing out because it's all blacked out. What are they hiding? What they're hiding is more malfeasance and abuse of the taxpayer money. Because we know that little bit that we've seen, 226 of 400 transactions by the Auditor General, is just the tip of the iceberg. And that's $390 million. Apparently, that doesn't concern Liberals for some reason. It doesn't concern them that this happened. It doesn't concern the Minister of Industry who has had not a single meeting with the new acting board or the NRC where he's proposing it. And you know what? That new transparency that he said he would do in June? They're giving out money again, and not one single bit of information is available anywhere on the website. SDTC used to put out a quarterly report on every company, every single company. They no longer do. It's silent. It's hidden. And the corruption of this organization and the nine Liberal directors in abusing taxpayer money in this way is beyond anything I've ever seen and I know many members of this House have ever seen. And Mr. Speaker, I understand I will continue with uh, enlightening the House after question period. The Honourable Member will have... <laughs>